You know, I don't understand this podcasting thing. How come you boys can't have those keg parties and chase the girls like all the other nice boys do? Y'all are nerds. Live from YouTube, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Listen, if you're a woman, you probably don't know what mansplaining is. Don't worry. I'm going to explain it to you. In case I get it wrong, we welcome the woman who's lady-splaining money, Sarah Catherine Gutierrez. Joining her to help you save your bajillion from LenPenzo.com, it's money-saving guru, Clark Howard. Nah, he's too busy filling water bottles from the tap. It's just Len Penzo. And from this podcast, we welcome Mr. Coupon Clipper himself, OG. Today, we're teaching you proven ways to save money. What are some items our panel have used to save their bajillions? We'll ask them and share some points from a major publication. And then, of course, we'll all listen closely as I mansplain today's trivia. And now, a guy who partially hosts this show to avoid the mom-splaining from... Oh, I can't say her name out too loud. Uh, so, uh, OJ Ame, it's Joe Saul Sihai. Nice job with the pig Latin. Doug's still learning his pig Latin. We actually had a pig Latin lesson this morning so that Doug could get that down. I, I still don't get it. Nice work. I have no idea. Ugg day, Aber, nay. <laughs> Doug, we've got a great show today. Thanks for hanging out with us the day before a big old holiday weekend. And we've got a holiday uh, list of contributors here. And we will have our guest of honor go last. But the man sitting across the virtual card table from me here on YouTube is Mr. OG. How are you, brother? Just another glorious, happy day uh, in the basement. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. <laughs> well, you know, you barely made the cut. A decade in, we weren't sure, but Doug and I had a meeting and we decided- There's still time for you to one, cut me out of it. What's one more episode? And deep under Los Angeles, where he infamously has his bunker because Doomsday's around the corner- as he moves to make sure the window isn't in the screen, it's Mr. OG. It's Mr. What I've called you, OG. It's it's the OG when it comes to blogging, Mr. Lempenzo. Hello, everybody. Joe, good to see you. Uh, I'm very happy today. I told you I got a new phone. I just upgraded from my uh, iPhone 6S to the iPhone 8, and I'm extremely excited. You know, that iPhone 8, it really has a lot of new features. I love it. I would it's have sold you my 11. What? I said I would have sold you my 11. They're up to 11 already? Well, no. 14 is coming out in September. Coming out, I have a 13, but but Len's up to 2012 now. So <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Leave this thing takes pictures? Wait a minute. It's past 2012? <laughs> Hold on a second. What happened in 1998, Len? Where was it? I don't want to tell you how much I paid for this thing then. <laughs> it's, it's, if it was more than $63, you got robbed. Yes. I'm glad. Free. I'm glad for Len's sake, we have a very special guest on today who will help you learn to save more money. She's the brains behind Lady Splaining Money. It is Sarah Catherine Gutierrez is here. Hi, Joe. Thanks for having me on. I'm so happy that you're joining, you're joining us. We have some sanity here, Sarah Catherine, and it's you. Sorry to put the pressure on you. That's a lot of pressure. Yes. Tell me about what you do, because one cool thing that you do, and you do so many different things, you've got this awesome challenge that a bunch of women are taking on this very topic we're going to talk about today, saving more money. Yes. Uh, so we are challenging women in Arkansas and across the country to save 10% of their pay for life. And uh, we've had a thousand women take this challenge so far, and we're trying to get to 10,000. Isn't that funny that there's some people, as you know, Sarah Catherine, because you and I were at Diana Merriam's economy conference, there's some people out there working on like 50 and 70, but man, the word still has to get out to so many people to just save 10. Right. Nasima famously, when, when I explained the challenge to her, she said, that's all. So you got to start somewhere and uh, yes, yeah, start at 10. And then from there, you can keep nudging it up a little bit. You also have a, have a, you've got so much stuff, but you also have a book on this topic. 
Yes, it is called But First Save 10. So uh, again, very specific. Uh, I wrote it for women, especially coming out of college on just get your first job and put 10% in that little blank as you're signing up for your retirement plan. You never have to think about it again. And just let me explain that title to Doug. It's not B-U-T-T. I can see the look on your face. <laughs> exactly. She said that. I'm like, it's, wow. Um, that sounds like my children who say oh, that yes. all the time. Have you listened to the show, Sarah Catherine? They sound That's like where we are. are. <laughs> they and Doug on the same level. We got a great show today. We are going to be talking about how to save more money. What's our what's our panel's tips on able to save more? We got Sarah Catherine, we got Len, we got OG. Today's a great day going into a holiday. It's also the last show in this eight weeks of shows. Next week, we are playing some of our favorites. This podcast, for those of you that are new to the basement, we've been around for about 10 and a half years. We're closing in on episode 1300, and there are some that you may have missed. So uh, next week, you're going to hear our favorite, three of our favorite episodes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But we want to close it off on a bang, finish off summer on a bang. And uh, for that... We actually need some different theme music because to go along with the holiday weekend, we got this. You guys know what this theme music means. It means it's game show day on the right. podcast. What I else? I thought it meant time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I wear my game show shirt. I'm all set. Yes, we're going to play Stacky Benjamin's game show. And for those of you new here, here's the way that we play. Uh, Sarah Catherine, you are playing on behalf of our friend Paula Pant, who is off for the rest of the year. Um, there's some good news and bad news about playing on behalf of Paula. Do you want the good news first or the bad news? Uh, let's hear the bad news first. Let's get it out of the way. The bad news is, is that Paula's in last place by a mile. By, by just a mile. <laughs> so no pressure. There, that is the good news. The good news is there's no pressure. And when we do our trivia segment partway through the show, you also get to guess last. So you get to hear these guys guess first. So uh, the score, Doug, do you have the score so far this year on our on our trivia and stuff? He's shaking his head furiously. No. <laughs> oh, don't, don't go to me. Don't go to me. <laughs> Please, no. Let me pull up the score because I think I have it right here. It is... Uh, let's see. Len has 11. OG has 13 and a half because he tied with Paula one week. Paula has six and a half. So Paula has exactly half the score of OG. We're playing for three points nope, today. She doesn't actually. Me good math. Oh, you're just, you're just, <laughs> just <slightly. laughs> math, math on YouTube. Not my strong suit. Yes. Uh, you don't need any math for this show. Uh, a little less than half, though, Sarah Catherine. So we, uh, where was I, OG? Oh, we're playing for three points today. <laughs> Two points to the winner who gets our game show first place, and then one point as usual for our trivia. So we're going to have some super fun. We have a piece. You could almost like close it out today. Yeah, that, that's true. That's I mean, true. I mean, because up, up by two already, Paula is virtually out of it if she doesn't show up today. No pressure. <laughs> And, well, uh, <laughs> and I mean, course. going up to, to two, three, four, five, five points with what, 10 weeks to go. That's, are you counting your chickens before they hatch? OG? I think you are. I, I'm just saying the math checks. Yeah. Andrea hanging out here with us yeah. says in fat, as fast as inflation has been going up. OG, we had an inflation. It's even worse. So, I mean, these points get worth more, a lot more as the year goes on. So good point. <laughs> good. Okay. Yeah, the further OG pulls away, up. the bigger the points are. The bigger be. the points become. And now for five hundred points in, in most, the ultimate championship. In a, in, in a usual year, Andrew, we don't count inflation, but this year you really have to because it's horrible. Uh, here's here's the deal: we have a popular piece from Nerd Wallet that is twenty two ways, twenty two proven ways to save more money. The the way we play this game show is we ask our three contestants to name one of the 22. And what's cool is if it's on the list, we can go over it. If it's not on the list, these guys generally have some great ways to save. And actually, Sarah Catherine, because Paula's in last place, we're going to give you the full slate of these in round one. By the way, round one, first guess is worth one point. Second guess worth three. Third round is going to be worth five. Of course, I show four fingers on line and five. Math is just not working out today. So, we should stay to audio only. I we think. totally should. 
All right, Sarah Catherine. So to kick off this game show, 22 proven ways to save money. These are tactics. What's on the list? Well, obviously, saving for retirement. So saving into your 401k or 403b at work. Is saving automatically on the list? I I played the wrong song. I have no idea where my sounds are. That sound means yes, it is on the list. And on the list, what we have is automate your transfers, automate your savings. Because when you automate your savings, you're much more likely to get it saved. And, And Sarah Catherine, I'm sure this is number one on the list, which is don't make yourself think about it. That's right. Don't make your brain constantly have to think about saving. Bypass it. Automation is perfect for that. Do you generally tell people when they do your 10% challenge to just start off at 10 or do you start off slow, like three, five, seven, whatever that is? Start up at 10. Start so off at 10. It's wild. When you, like anybody listening to this who has anyone that's 22 or 23 in their life, send the show to them because these folks never get the message to save 10%. And I have personally seen people, I sit there at these retirement plan meetings and you say, hey, just put 10% in that blank. They do it. They don't know what their paycheck's going to be anyway. And so it's a lot harder to save when you're used to your paycheck and you'd have to back it down in order to save that amount. So yeah, first paycheck, right out out of graduation, first job, easy to save 10%. Len, I love what Sarah Catherine's saving because I know me before a budget, people just generally spend what's in their checking account. So if it's not there, to her point, it's like you never even had it. Yeah, it's hard to spend money that you don't even know that you have so or that you've you've shunted off to somewhere else. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really smart way to go. When you started off with your 401k, how much did you save? What percentage did you save at first? I started at the bare started at the bare minimum what the company match was, which was 3%. That's wow. where I started. When yeah. did you then start? Because you definitely notched it up from there. When did you get the aha? Uh, well, I. I got the aha probably it before. Sounds like he hasn't had it before yet. That, it's just I didn't have the it's just I didn't have the cash. So but so what I did though is I just gradually over time when I got raises, I used my raise and I shunted a portion of my raise into the, you know, uh withdrawals or the deposits into the 401k. So that's another thing where I didn't miss it. I would like to file an objection by using the word shunted twice within 45 seconds, please. that is not a normal word i I think that uh i think that len found it or read it somewhere and now he's trying to insert it into every sentence i'm trying to fill in for paula that's what i was i'm just trying to i'm trying to fill in for paula today it did sound very smart do i have to have a drink of my coffee no we're not playing that game again this week we are not playing the paula pant big word game uh, okay. This week or the Len Penzo big word game, but uh, it is your turn, Mr. Penzo. Sarah Catherine gets one on the list. 21 left. I just want some clarification. Is this savings f- for retirement or is this Let's just saving well. money, period? Saving, saving money, period. Money, if, period. If you think you can't save money, these tactics will help. Some things are cutting things out of your life. Some things are adding gotcha. like automatic transfers. Okay. Very good. Uh, in that case, let's see, I have four I've written down here. I don't know what, what I want to do here. You know what? I use this a lot <laughs> in these games and it never seems to get on there, but I'm going to do it. Buy off brands instead of uh, national brands. Buy off brands instead of national brands. Is that on there? <laughs> yeah, no. Still not working. Yeah, we got Still something. Still not working. We got some, just to give you an idea, Len, we have one that's, um, it's a we don't need to give Len an idea, close, but, uh, not <laughs> well, if you're going to give me the enough. idea, I wish you'd have gave it to me before. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <It's true. laughs> yes. But Len though, let's stick with you on this point because this is a good point, right? So often we buy this name brand thing and we really don't care about it. Yeah. And you know, some people think, well, name brands naturally better and it's, and, and, and that's anything it could be food. It could be anything you buy clothing, what have you, you can shunt to whatever you want to do. Oh, gee. So, so like you're good with off brand sushi. <laughs> well, I don't eat sushi. So yes, <laughs> so I guess if I was, I, there's no, no, you never stop go and go sushi. sushi. <laughs> What's that? The two? Yeah, go ahead and get, you see the, so you, you stop at those gas stations and you go into the, uh, the, the fast food joint right there in the, in the gas station, the grab and go and get the sushi from there. The two words that don't go together, discount and sushi. 
Mm-hmm. Those are those are not not great. But you've done some taste test. I mean, not a not sushi taste test, but you've done taste test on the site. Yeah, and I think I've done more than let's see. I've probably done fifteen or sixteen over the dozen or 13, 14 years I've been uh, doing the blog. And I would say more than half of them, the store brand actually, these are blind taste tests, actually ended up getting better results, had better, higher scores from my, from the people taking on part in the challenge. Uh, it actually got better scores. So, you know, it's worth a try. I mean, what do you got to lose, uh, at least in, in the food area now, except for maybe sushi you might, might not have so much fun. Uh, if you're grabbing the sushi Coleslaw. right next to those rolling hot dogs, Easy. I'm right here. You know, yeah. you know, it's been a few years ago now, but you guys remember when, when it came to alcohol, they had that uh, challenge and gray goose ended up taste like in a taste test was no better than the off brands that it competed against. And we did in a wine class, I did the very last, the very last class after we learned like how to evaluate wines, we did like a blind taste test. And it was the, it was the middle of the road wine that beat See? out like a wine that was like 15 bucks, beat the hell out of one that was 50. And all of us, there agreed. you go. it was, it yep. was pretty amazing. Yeah. I think, I think OG, the point here is, is if the name brand really truly means something to you, buy it. But if it doesn't go cheaper. Yeah. I mean, for, for stuff like food, you know, are the generic, uh, Cocoa Krispies any better than Kellogg? I'm, I don't know. To and, and you know what? Experiment for you know what, OG? I actually did one of my taste tests with kids. I got the neighborhood kids and I did kids cereal. And you would be shocked. I can imagine how this went over. No, it went hey, over. Uh, it uh, went over great. Hey, kids. Great. Hey, kids. <laughs> kids come on over. The lens got a panel <laughs> van. I'm giving it away. But yes, I actually did a taste <laughs> test with neighborhood kids on kids who cereal. To, who wants to taste Uncle Len's candy? And let me tell you that can't you know what kids cereal kids cereal is really expensive. I mean, it's more expensive it than the, the healthy stuff. Yeah. Let's uh, move on. So, OG, you got 21 left to choose from here, big guy. Yeah, I'm still a little confused because I was very caught off guard with the save into your 401k answer. I, I, I thought this was trying to like not the physical act of saving money, but to save money. Like anyways, so I'm just gonna make stuff up. Um, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, something simple clip coupons is clip coupons on the list. And it really truly is not. However, no. however, but there's, we're giving it to there's, you. There's, there's two of them. And I think Doug, you see both of them. I see one for sure. Yeah, I think we're going to do this one, which actually involves more than clipping coupons. It's prep for grocery shopping. Yeah, okay. And well, the other one I saw was get discounts on entertainment. Well, thanks for blowing it. Now we're down another one. Everybody. Wait a minute. You're going to give him you're going to give him clip coupons. Those two are the two that you're saying are equal to clip coupons. They're close enough. Are if you you're serious? getting discounts on entertainment, then you're you have to clip coupons to do that. What else but, are you going to uh, do? You do? Well, you don't always have to, but it's a good way to get them. No, I just, we're already filing complaints. Well, that, that's almost like a, that's almost like a tautology. Wait. I mean, where, how do you save money? You, you get discounts. Tautology. You clip, you're going to, you, yeah, you get discounts. Well, we just swipe both of those off the list. So, OG, <laughs> you, you covered it with both of those. You got close enough and uh, clipping coupons, by the way. Really, you know, you and I've talked about this on the show and let's be clear, clipping coupons, not a great strategy, but these larger ones, discounts on your entertainment and having a food strategy when you go into the grocery store, both can save you a bunch of money and be worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily mean get the Sunday paper and cut out the stuff, but, but if you have the opportunity to do that for sure, I know even a lot of places will do it online. If you go make your list on Kroger, for example, and, and you use their, their app, They'll say, oh, these things have money off based on the purchase or you use your your uh, discount uh, number. You know, you sign up for their club or whatever it is at the grocery store and that helps as well. I think the biggest thing when it comes to it is just thinking in advance. I was talking to somebody just before we started recording and he says, gosh, I started to eat a little bit healthier. So which basically means all I am is hungry all the time. Bad idea to go grocery shopping when you're hungry because <laughs> famous Amos cookies look really good and so do Oreos. And uh, they're never on sale. It's kind of a gimmick. But um, if you go and you think about it from a meal standpoint or, you know, I'm buying for the next three days, this is the lunches I want to have, or these are the dinners that I want to make for the family, you're likely to 
have a better experience as it relates to your uh, shopping budget. And it matters more. We talked about inflation earlier. It matters more now. Sarah, Catherine, any uh, advice you have for people if they're thinking about saving money on entertainment? Oh, on entertainment. That's How about uh, that one? I went the other way. That's interesting. I guess pregame. So that's have your fun with alcohol before you go out. You know, I do own a bar, so I don't love this suggestion. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> but, uh, but that is one way to save. And here's the craziest thing. In Arkansas, and I don't know how it is in other states, but if you order hard liquor in any drink, it's going to be taxed at 28%. If you order beer or wine, it's taxed around more 10%. So it's wild in some states you need to, before you order, don't just ask how much the drink costs, ask how much the taxes the are. The taxes? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> And you know what's funny, Sarah Catherine, uh, speaking of saving money on entertainment, so the type of bar that you own, you guys teach salsa dancing, and Cheryl and I have talked about coming up your way to Little Rock, and, and what do those lessons cost? So 10 bucks to get in, you know, for a whole night of entertainment, including a free lesson at the beginning. So I uh, definitely got to come and salsa dance in Little Rock. I love what Drew hanging out with us wow. on YouTube says to clarify what you said. What Sarah Catherine really means is pregame unless you're coming to my bar. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then don't pregame. That's, that's good. So, so Sarah Catherine, do you give discounts? Because we have a local place here that gives discounts uh, if you order a double drink. If you make your drink a double, they'll give you a discount. Oh, Ooh, boy. I don't know. Volume we'll have discount. to look into that. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, that although you, that's nowhere. probably not, that's probably not safe on the dance floor. Can you imagine a whole bunch of people uh, who've doubled up on their drinks? No, I, I think, oh boy, especially salsa dancing where you're all over the place. Yeah, that's just, not good. Oh my, somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. We'll give you a discount if you like make it a half. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, Doug, that's the end of our first round. What is the score? And what a round it was, Joe. In last place, we have somebody whose initials are the same as last place. <laughs> we have Len Penzo coming in with a big zero. And then tied for first place, OG, which means he is tied with Sarah Catherine Gutierrez. We are going to finish this. Uh, By the way, did we all just fall in love with Sarah Catherine a little bit when she said she owned a bar? <laughs> I was just thinking of the next time I'm going to Little Rock. I'm like, Let's see. we all just kind of go to the airport. I wonder if I should stay an extra day. I know I'm already <laughs> married, but so it's uh, it, it is it is definitely knowing a friend that has a bar and salsa dancing. Like Cheryl's so excited to come and hang out in Little Rock to go salsa dancing. Plus we, we had a blast. I want an Instagram there. video of Joe salsa dancing. It's a gorgeous. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Sarah Catherine, you had to promise to leave that off the Instagram. Check out this geek. Yes. We're going to take a quick break from uh, today's main action to do our trivia question. We're going to move it up early so that we can do rounds two and three after our trivia question. This is a year long competition where uh, Len Penzo, Paula Pant, and OG are going after the absolute worst prize of all. It's this horrible dollar store trophy that we have. And yet it's they all horrible. fiercely want it. They all are. It's sitting, it's sitting next to my TV in the family room. It is, it is so Still bad. It's of, incredible. Although I have noticed that the uh, Hershey kisses have gone away. So someone's eating them. Somebody. <laughs> You check out the help, meaning the three little uh, OG. I, I think juniors. her name is Caroline. But, oh, uh, yeah. youngest. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And what Caroline needs is more sugar, by the way. It's exactly, right. it's exactly oh, what she oh, needs. No. So we've got our trivia question. And this is a trivia question where you're trying to guess and be the closest. And Sarah Catherine will go last. Len will go second. OG is going to kick it off. But for all that, we actually need a trivia question. So Doug, you ready? So here, ready. Here we go. Stackers, I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. You know, it's almost Labor Day, and that usually means grilling out for most people and a trip to the old burn unit for Doug here. Joe tried to take the lighter fluid away this year right when I perfected my super soaker flamethrower. Nice try, Joe. But fire is a serious subject, so make sure you keep an extinguisher close and stay far away from my place. Speaking of fire, you may have heard 
of the London fire that happened on this day in 1666, back when they had to load their super soakers one drop of lighter fluid at a time. Glenn, would you mind mansplaining for us what that was like back in 1666? (laughs) Just maybe give us a clue. Anyway, my question is, What was the estimated cost of the damages in British pounds back in 1666? Looks like I'm going to have to explain to our writer, Paulette, that British dollars are actually called pounds because back then they actually weighed a pound. They were huge, these huge coins, bigger than they are now. Anyway, I'm going to be back with the answer after I go shine up my fireproof jeggings. (laughs) Here we go. Everybody's got their word. Doug's got his jeggings. Len's got his... uh... What was that? Stilted? I don't My know. Shunting? Shunting. My shunting? My shunting. Yes, shunting. <laughs> shunting. Yes. All right. Uh, speaking of people uh, and fires, you're going to burn this down. See if you can get another one right, OG. So this is not in today's dollars. 1666 Correct. dollars. Old, old dollars. Old not even pounds. dollars. Pounds. In British pounds. Heavy well, dollars. But I got to do the conversion Hilarious. to dollars head first. So... 1666 pounds. How much was, How the, much was the damage? Claim. Yeah. Oh, it's just the claim. <laughs> Progressive and on the hook. When the state it, farm the person showed skim up. off the top. Yeah. <laughs> when the farmer's insurance guy showed up, how much was the check that he wrote? How much did he Venmo to the queen? Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it was 51,000 pounds. 51,000 pounds, Mr. Penzo. Is this the whole city of London burned down? And, and you want the insurance claim for the whole ci- within the whole city? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's I not actually an insurance claim. OG brought that into the whole story. But oh. yeah, what was the value yes. of the damage? In 1666 British yeah. pounds. I mean, you can go with 1966 if you want. Uh, 1666 British pounds. So the number is going to be relatively smaller. Gosh, that seems kind of 51,000. That seems low. I'm going to say I've just got I don't want to get sandwiched. So I'll have to pick something. I'll say <laughs> I'll say a million a million pounds. Boy, Sarah Catherine, that gives you a lot of room to navigate. You got 51,000 on one end, a million on the other. What do you think? You doing quick math in your head on this? Yeah, OG, what was the conversion rate in 1666? I can't tell I you that. that was. Oh, okay. I do know. You're lucky. You're lucky there's no conversion because it's I, I'm to $1, do my... $1,666. Or and by the way, Sarah Catherine, it's important for you to know it's not closest without going over. It's just closest. So you can... You can be all right. Okay. That's enough. That's enough, Doug. <laughs> so I'm just going to say 51,000 pounds. But that, 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 that answer's good. taken. <laughs> That's exactly oh, what he said. He said 50. <laughs> 52. 52,000 pounds. And that's the way the game's played. It's her first time on here, and she plays it like a pro. So we got 52,000. We got 51,000. Really, I mean, you want to kind of go a little higher and take Len a little. Well, we'll out of see. It, don't you? We'll see. You pick the side that you want to be closest to, right? All right. All right, we got 51,000, 52,000. We got a million. And one million dollars. Yes. Pounds. We'd love to tell you who's right, but we don't play that way. We'll be right back. And OG, you kicked it off with 51,000. Seemed like a good idea at the time till Sarah Catherine capped you off at the knees. <sighs> you know, what happens <laughs> yes. when you're winning? You feeling good, though? I don't know. I probably could have busted out a calculator and tried to work on this a little bit, but oh well. Len, you are far above everybody else at a million. You still think they're both way too low? I do. I do. All right. Well, we'll see. Sarah Catherine, you feeling pretty confident? No, not at all. (laughs) Well, we'll see if you have a right to be confident or not, because Doug is about to bring us an answer. Let's go, man. Stackers, I'm British fire blighter and noted historian on the history of London, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. The Great Fire of London did unbelievable damage, burning down 85% of the city. Pretty much everything but the trendy rooftop bars. You think we're in a housing crunch? (laughs) They lost... I'll pause for laughter. Go ahead. Sorry. (laughs) You think we're in a housing crunch? They lost 13,200 homes. 
The rebuild took 30 years. So how much was the damage from the Great Fire of London? At a time when the annual income of all the Londoners combined was 12,000 pounds, the extent of the damage in 1666 was a whopping 10 million British pounds. And that means not only was it a heck of a fire, but also that Len Penzo is our sizzling wiener. <laughs> He's, that's a good Labor Day humor there. Wiener. Yes, for people that are going to be roasting hot dogs. Probably don't want to burn the city down. But uh, Len, you going to do a barbecue to celebrate your big win? Uh, sure, I'll do that. I'm, I'm just pleased to get within spitting distance of OG again. So what do you do Labor Day weekend at the Penzo house? Uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. Well, there it is. There it is. Traditional. The sizzling wiener right there. All right. I don't sit. I'll forget it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. I'm not going there. And we're gone. <laughs> Let's get into the second half of the show. Sarah Catherine, the second half of the show is brought to you by Magnify Money. You know what happens when you go to stackybenjamins.com slash Magnify Money? What happened? <laughs> you, you find out. <laughs> for people she's not, not even going to try. <laughs> well, but for people not with us live, she's got this look of, I can't wait to hear on her face. You find out that those brick and mortar banks where you're doing all your banking probably don't have the best rates. Magnify Money lists all the online banks and you find out that Usually it's an online bank that might have a better rate. StackyBenjamins.com slash Magnify Money, where they take 92% of all the banks out there, rate them head to head, and you can check out savings accounts, CD rates, no fee checking accounts, and more. StackyBenjamins.com slash Magnify Money. All right. If you just joined us, which would be weird on a podcast <laughs> that you started <laughs> the podcast somehow in the middle. No idea how that would work. But we're in the middle of a game show. And Doug, if you could remind people with short-term memory problems, what is the score so far? So far, and I want to emphasize this first one, Len Penzo has zero points, despite <laughs> the fact... <laughs> Just just a big fat zero, big donut hanging up there. OG's got one. Sarah Catherine has one. But Len Penzo's got zero. Yes. And, and he's in the chase. He is putting the pedal to the metal. He's coming after it with three points for each question in this round. I know he's going to try to sweep it here after getting the trivia. So can he do a three-point play on OG? This would be big if he could. We start off with Mr. Penzo, by the way. In round two, your answers are worth three points. What is a tactic, a proven tactic to get more money saved? I always get frustrated with these games because it seems I pick up a, I can come up with some good ideas and they're never on the dumb list. Um, let me see. You know, my parents, they'd save money. They made a lot of money actually doing this. When they used to wash their clothes and dry their clothes, they had a jar at, on their washer and dryer. And every time they put a, uh, you know, do a wash or do a dry, they put a quarter in the, in the jar. They ended up saving like every year. I think I can't remember what the number was. It's three or $400 of extra cash just by using that, putting that clever change in the jar. So how about have a change jar? Have a change jar. Is that on the list? That is on the list. It's actually count your coins and your bills because people have random coins and bills laying all over the house. And sometimes that adds up to, just uh, you know, a little more money. It's, it's not hey, the bill, the money. bill things that's are your money yeah. in a different spot. It's still your money. <laughs> you know how sometimes in, this in is baseball, the most ridiculous thing. I'm going to move money from one drawer to another drawer. Well, look at me. I saved some money. But you don't have it saved. It's sitting in this random corner earning nothing. Now you can take it and put it away. But now it's in a jar earning nothing, and somehow that's better. <laughs> Andrea hanging out here online says Len's parents invented acorns. Is that true, Len? <laughs> uh, I guess they did. Yeah, sure. This, this is kind of OG. It's kind of an acorns thing. Take that money and get it it's saved not for an you. an acorns thing. It's because he didn't create the money to save it. It was like literally well, I dug in my pocket and put it into another pocket. <laughs> well, isn't the definition of saving money not spending it? That's right. That's the definite not squandering it on by it being in my pocket. Items. Am I not not spending it? Do you want to shunt your money into? You should be shunting your money <laughs> into a jar 
to keep it from going somewhere where it shouldn't. Sure, but I'm not as, I'm not as good as not I'm not as good at this money. as Paula is. I can only come up with in, one word. <laughs> if it's in my pocket, I have therefore not spent it. And now moving it into a different pocket is still not spent. Yeah, so uh, says the so guy ridiculous. who says save money by getting discounts. <laughs> Sarah Catherine, is this saving money or not? <laughs> oh, yes. It's kind of like the bucketing system, right? So you're just putting it into a money bucket of an unspendable bucket. Absolutely. It's in I a think. change jar. It's totally spendable. That's, that's the- <laughs> not if you've mentally assigned that to be saving. We got the voice of reason here. Sarah Catherine comes down with the answer. And while, while you're on stage here, Sarah Catherine, Len got that one right. Uh, your second guess. Okay. I'm really confused by this whole quiz because, you know, when I think saving, I think like, where do you save? And then how do you put, put money, the money in a there? change and then jar you- from one pocket to the other? <laughs> exactly. right? and, then, and then you have less money in your pocket. So you just spend less money. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to like wrap my ra- mind around this article. And some of so these can- are, by the way, save or uh, spend less money. Some of the ones on this list. Okay. Maybe this isn't the right list, but I would say like a roundup account. Do a... Roundup account. Oh, come on. I think, by the way, I think that's, I think that, no offense, Len, but I think this one is easier. And like, how many times do banks offer this now? So many banks, Sarah Catherine, offer this where you can round, explain what a roundup account is for people that don't know. I love these accounts. It's a way to save and trick yourself. So you basically allow them to round up your spending to a dollar to the next $5. I think, I mean, they can go pretty high. And so the idea is if you spend $4 and 76 cents on a latte, then they'll put 24 cents into your account, into your savings account. So you know, they you don't see- put the 24 cents in. <laughs> oh, here we go. Just stop. <laughs> so it's a brain trick. It's an amazing way to like trick yourself into saving. It adds up over time. I've seen clients like really end up with a lot of money in their accounts from tricking themselves. So you don't see $4.76, you see $5 leave your account. It's a great great way to save. Uh, to I the can't average, believe it's not in the list. Well, to the average person, what's the difference, right? I mean, what is the difference? Four seventy six to five bucks. Right. It's to me, it's the same thing as putting the quarter when you're running a load of laundry. Like it's. Yes. I was impressed she was able to do that math so quickly to come up with the twenty four cents. That was hard. Like I wasn't sure. even close to the answer on that. And but I also want to know: Are those knockoff lattes? Because where are you getting lattes that cheap? Aren't they like eight bucks now? Oh, maybe with inflation. I, I don't buy them anymore. Is that how much they cost? You yeah, might need to leave mark. the state the of Arkansas. Mark. <laughs> I don't know. There's some expensive lattes in Little Rock. Come down to Texarkana and you'll find some dude uh, next to a cornfield selling you discount lot. You don't want to do that one either, by the way. Uh, next up, what does that mean? OG hasn't gone. I'm going to stick with the coffee theme. Um <laughs> I had a very snarky answer, very snarky commentary coming, but I just, in the interest of being nice, um, coffee at home. Is coffee at home on the list? I don't know. What do you think, Doug? I do think it's on there. You do think it's the one? I do. Well, because we've been very generous. We've been very generous on a couple of these. And I see one. I don't want to. Fourth from the top. Um, I just highlighted it. Yes, on the left column, fourth yes. from the or fourth no, down. I don't want to do this, but he got it right. It's actually much bigger than this. It's minimize restaurant spending. Minimize. Dang, I had that one on my list too. So I guess that one's right. Spending because I think so, you feel bad. You feel bad about that, don't you, OG? No, you don't. Do you? No, you don't. <laughs> oh, I take about it what? Well, what I feel bad about, about getting credit for that one. It, I mean, it's a restaurant, <laughs> coffee house, is that not the same place? I mean, if you can get credit for putting money from one pocket into the other pocket, I can get credit for actually not spending it. <laughs> I'm really not spending it by going to get coffee. You're just moving it, but that's okay. Mom and dad were cool. So. Hey, see, Leonidas just said this isn't even close to the same thing. He just just said that. I think it's yours. very much close to the same thing. I think it's very much. You're, is the, the question is, is, is Starbucks a restaurant? I guess that's the question. Is Starbucks a restaurant? Starbucks would say so. Yes. Yeah, they serve food. food. Yeah. yeah. They have some delightful breakfast. Stuff? 
Delightful. They also have like a mortgage refinance so you can afford the bill over in the court. <laughs> my, my, my snarky answer was going to be based on these, uh, this list so far, uh, you should save money by getting a loan. <laughs> Because magically you put money away. I'm waiting for the ding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here's the, right. That, would be, that would be bad. I feel like no, Glenn Pencil is about to throw his computer with some of these. But uh, the judge gave credit for that one. So at the end of two rounds, Doug, what is the score? Well, this was a ra- rather unfortunate round for Len because despite the fact that he got our first three-point answer, everybody else did too, so that still leaves him in last place Sarah with three Catherine points. Did not get it. I'm, well, I'm sorry. Who's, Sarah Catherine are you did here, not? Doug? Nope, Sarah did Catherine it? didn't. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, oh. but I feel like I should have, so maybe that's what he was. Oh, I think I was rooting for you because you own a bar. Um, <laughs> I thought you were rooting for me because I had a great answer. <laughs> Okay, we'll go with that. You don't know so, Doug very well. The rest of us thought you had a great answer. The entire audience, Sarah Catherine. Doug just heard bar. I've got my beer goggles on when I look at you now. Uh, oh, boy. That's probably something we should get edited out. Back to the cutting room floor. That's like, that's that's like Joe's getting a little, Tommy a little boy, In Tommy Boy, when, when the guy's got the camera and he's like, you know, he's like, what's going to cost you? He's like, take that out, delete that. And this is my last show with Stacking Benjamin. So <laughs> You'll be getting the H- letter from HR. We, well, that means now we have a new loser. Sarah Catherine is in last place with one point. We have got Len Penzo in second place with three points, and OG is in first with four points. It's like a microchasm of the year-long competition. Len chasing OG toward the finish line. But the good news is if Sarah Catherine gets the third one right – and neither Len nor OG gets it. Sarah Catherine, you could still be the winner because it's five points for this last round. You get to go first for a chance at the win. What's it going to be? I'm debating on two, but I, I'm just going to go with an energy audit in your home to cut your utility oh, bills. I like that. Oh, it Real is saving money. I like it. An energy audit in there. In there. It is <laughs> reducing. Wow. Finding ways to reduce your electric bills is what they had specifically, but an energy audit can go a long way. Have you done this, Sarah Catherine? I did. And it was amazing. Uh, very easy to set up. They were there for three hours. They tested all of the doorways and seeing if there was any leakage of air. It was amazing. Now if they could just tell my kids to shut the door every time they walk outside. <laughs> and turn, turn the light off. Turn the light off. Yes, the energy company uh, will not send you new kids. They will not. <laughs> like, <laughs> or a babysitter. I'll take it. They may they may teach you how to replace light bulbs, but they won't replace kids. Uh, you know what we did? We did because my kids used to, I, I would come home, Sarah Catherine, and we'd have two TVs. They're both on and every light in the house is on and nobody's in the house. They're all out in the backyard, right? Everybody's there. So I decided that dad screaming and yelling was no longer a viable option. Instead... We created, I created this graph, you know, this is back in the day. We created a graph and every time we got the utility bill, we played limbo. Like how low can it go and just turn it into a challenge? And then I'm sitting there watching like basketball with my daughter. I leave the room to get a glass of water. I come back. She's turned off the TV. She's like, dad, you got to turn off the TV. I'm like, what are you you doing? She's like, we got to save money. It was great. Once you turned into That's a game. Amazing. Yeah. And you know what? There was no prize. It was just us turning it into fun. So I think any parent can do that. But I love this idea of an energy audit. All right. Sarah Catherine now maybe claims the throne unless Mr. Penzo can get this one right. Well, I got a couple. Len's the guy that when you're playing Scrabble, he doesn't think about his word before it's his turn. He waits till it's his turn, and then he's, like, looking at his tiles. Oh, I think it's far more dramatic. I think it's all dramatic. He knows what he's he's going to say. Very very funny, Jeff Johnson. Very funny. I see. (laughs) Jeff Johnson says, 
Len you Penzo's, need to help me give me a real answer. Len Penzo's third guess probably will be something like buy cans of corn, <laughs> store it in the bunker, wait for inflation to kick in. <laughs> in fact, uh, although actually you, that will, that will, uh, that is a good way to get a, that's did, a good did Jeff Johnson. Just get five points. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I like autumn's comment the best. Actually. I thought that was uh, pretty uh, funny. Autumn says uh, coffee shops or restaurants the same way. Hot dogs or sandwiches and cereal is soup. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to say have a yard sale. Is for the lead is have a yard sale on the list. <laughs> it is not on the list. Have you done the yard sale thing, Len? I used to, used to, uh, and, and it was actually, it made some money. Yeah, but uh haven't done it in a while, but yeah, it was, we used to do it every year, actually. Growing up, we did them every year. We would do it every year, and my parents would fund the vacations. I have done one, and I should do more, but just the hassle of getting all that stuff, getting it all set up, and then spending a Saturday, not my thing. Sarah Catherine, you do All those weirdos sale? coming to your house. That's right. I have done yard sales. Um, they're a lot of work, but now I find that like I wouldn't be able to do one because we use our stuff so much. They wouldn't be worth anything for a yard sale. Ah, so, so you've kept the stuff that you have to just stuff that you use, which is maybe better. OG, you guys do a yard sale? No, no, no chance. <laughs> but we do uh, use the internet for that. So you can sell, I mean, between like Facebook marketplace and next door and all that sort of stuff. If you have stuff in your house that you want to get rid of, you can just post it on, on basically like kind of the virtual yard sale type deal. And um, we uh, we're kind of redoing a number of things in our house. And so we've gotten rid of bedroom furniture and kitchen tables and chairs and, you know, just uh, blinds, you know, light fixtures, just stuff that, Normally you just kind of throw in the trash after you've uh, used it up and people have needed it. People remodeling houses are like, Oh, I need a mirror. Yeah. We had, we had a family that drove Joe from Monroe, Louisiana. Wow. To, really? To buy a mirror that we were selling for $50. Really? No joke. The, yep. the gas it, like, that you spend yes. for the discount. He said it was the hardest thing to find was a mirror in that shape and that size. He said, as soon as we saw it, we, you know, he's like, I couldn't believe you're giving it away for 50 bucks. I'm like, well, you can pay more. OG was the only person within six hours that had a mirror in the shape of a heart that he had installed above his bed that he was taking down. Okay. Joke yeah. took now, far too long to unravel. Now, yeah. Now I feel a lot better about my beer goggle joke because it was not <laughs> no. nearly. Sorry. Nope. Just, I was just wondering what kind of mirror is worth driving that far? Like why do you, why do you have well, a mirror? I don't know. It was, it was the size, it was just the size of the bathroom mirror and you know, they were having a hard time yeah. finding a, Wow. Like a landscape version of it, not yeah. a vertical. I don't know. I know. Len is a guy that is a music lover and you were in a band for quite a, quite a while. Uh, you must have had a huge CD collection, I would imagine. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I sure did. I had a huge cassette tape right. uh, collection. Eight track, too. <laughs> real to real. Well, eight tracks, I'm not really into, the, I'm not quite that old, but yeah. But there's, I, a com but there's a company, the reason I bring it up, there's a company that when I decided to get rid of my CDs a few years ago, I put them in a box and there was a company that you went and you just took your phone and uh, with their app and it scanned them all in. You put them in a box, you just put the label in and you sent them to them. They did give you a ton of money, but you got some money and you got rid of it. And it was just, it all went in a box and you didn't have to worry about cool. anything. And I know eBay will do that too. eBay, I think has a service where you just put the stuff in a box. They tell you if it's worth anything and they will also help you sell it. So yeah, online, I like that OG that you can. Um, Consignment DVDs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who yeah, wants a that. who wants a 1999 Pierce Brosnan gently used? <laughs> die oh, another day. Have, that's whatever. a handsome man right there. All my well, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy party all the time, right? Uh, Doug and I were talking about that a few weeks ago. <laughs> we so many, we have so many DVDs. At, uh, I tried to use that. It was like I would just come back and say uh, it's not worth anything and pass. <laughs> But then that's good because you know that, that if it's not worth anything there, then, then you're safe to just put it in the garbage. Okay, Joe, we have an incredible game shaping up here, and we are making this take way too long. Are to we? Get, we're at like, oh, my God. It, it's the fourth quarter. OG's on the three-yard line. Can we he do. punch it across the goal line? Or we do. He he's already won. We have he's already won. He is not one. He is no, not he is one. not. Sarah because Catherine Sarah is still Catherine winning. Sarah Catherine Gutierrez has... Oh. She gotcha. has now taken the lead. And if OG 
completely whiffs on this. We have a dark horse coming in out of nowhere, a pinch hitter to win the whole thing. So what you got, OG? I had quite the list, but I feel like uh, you've used a number of them as double counting. You had cancel subscriptions. That was one I had. And and you said, well, we're going to count that as part of your clip coupons. When did eating, we, you know, did, you're kind of did we, t- did we talk one. about canceling subscriptions? Uh, manage, uh, reduce. I just assume cancel is in there. So help me if there's like an actual line item for cancel subscriptions. Uh, so I've only got one left on my list. Actually, I have two. It's a long shot. I'm, I'm using your analogy, Doug. I am throwing a Hail Mary from the three. <laughs> so this is this is the Seattle Seahawks throwing a pass instead of just yeah. giving it to Marshawn because I don't have anything. I'm going to say uh, pretty generically stop the vices, but more specifically stop smoking to save money. I don't like the look of your face. Is stop smoking on the list. Mm, see. <laughs> Here is the other one that I thought was really weird, but I thought I was going to skip on it. Go to matinees instead of evening shows. That that would have been minimize your entertainment, entertainment. costs. Oh, see, that, there you go. We already see, did. Like, yes. oh, so, Joe, at what point should we tell him that we hadn't taken cancel unnecessary subscriptions? <laughs> Number off one the on list this yet. list <laughs> is cancel unnecessary <laughs> subscriptions. But you said it. You said we you did said not. We never said we it. We never did. did. No, okay. no, no. But you know what's even more important? But then I said Sarah Catherine's our winner. Sarah Catherine is our winner. I said cancel subscriptions. You should have taken my first answer. Can we mute his mic? He just had a final answer moment. You Good job, your, Sarah Catherine. You talked yourself out of it. We waited for the final answer. No, yes. This is baloney. Nice this job. whole thing is under protest. Sarah Catherine, you know, would you like I'm, to... I'm again. saving money by moving it from one pocket to the other. Ooh, look at me, world. Sarah Catherine, do you, Sarah Catherine, do you have an acceptance speech? Um, does this mean I get to spend the day with Paula Payet? I don't know. We'll have to write yes. to her and say, hey, yes, it does. We can promise that for Paula, can't we? Yeah, she's she's in Columbia, yes. Sarah Catherine. No. She's in Columbia. She's in New she's York literally- City at Columbia. Oh, not in Medellin. <laughs> The other I was like, Columbia. Columbia? Yes. I've been telling everybody she's in Columbia. She's Columbia, not Columbia. Okay. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Sarah Catherine on the win. Let's go over these and I'll share with you what uh, some of these other ones were so that we can listen to Len Groan all the way through them. <laughs> Number uh, one left on our list was getting creative with your gifts. Get more creative. People spend bunches of money and a lot of times person don't care. It's the thought that counts, right? Get creative with that. Second on the list, reduce your gas usage. If you bundle up the trip that you take, so you go to three or four different places instead of going out a lot, you got that. Next up is switch your cell phone plan. That was a very basic one. Map out your major purchases. A lot of times when it comes to those huge purchases, people just wing it and don't do that, especially with the major ones like where you're going to live, what your auto is going to be. Restrict your online shopping is on this list because a lot of times we'll just, uh, this is OG on a Friday night after his second uh, glass of Woodford. He's uh, getting on the old Amazon. I feel like there should be, I, I, I feel like there's gotta be an analysis that Amazon Six Sigma guys and gals are doing about like the peak shopping time. And I, and I, I'm certain that it's Friday night and Saturday night, like post 9 p.m. But wouldn't it be funny if like Uber has surge pricing? Yeah. <laughs> if oh, Amazon I'm sure goes, they do. 100%. A lot of people, a lot of people are drunk right now. It shows you on your computer, prices are 20% higher. So good luck. Yes. Uh, delay purchases with a 30 day. It doesn't have to be 30 days. I've heard people go just one day or three days. So delay your purchase with a 30 day rule. Uh, lower your car cost, meaning uh, uh, find ways to pay uh, for your car in different ways. Set savings goals is a basic one that I thought Sarah Catherine, based on where she was going early on, what might have gotten. Bundle your cable and your internet. That feels like it's eight years ago, doesn't it? Uh, pay off your high interest rate debt. We'll save you a bunch of money. Keep your savings in a high yield savings account. Lower your student loan payments or just write them off, write them off too soon. Just too soon. Uh, create a budget is another one. Track your spending and oh. refinance your mortgage are the ones that were on the list. But nice job, guys. Good, good work. All right. That's going to do it for today. I don't Let's think any of us would refinance our mortgage right now, though. 
So yeah, if you refinanced it before, probably not an opportunity today. Uh, let's find out what you guys are doing, where you live this holiday weekend. Oh, gee, big plans for the big plans. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff going on this weekend, Friday, Saturday in particular, and um, Sunday, Monday, we're just kind of hanging out. A little pool little party, maybe. I don't know. We'll ask our Come guest of honor what she's doing last, but um, everybody else invited to, well, Sarah Catherine, you're invited too, to OG's house. Sounds yeah. like pool party at OG's. Len Penzo, what's going on this holiday weekend at the Penzo residence and at lenpenzo.com? Well, I, you know what? I've got to change my plans now because Paula told me she was in Columbia, C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A. So <laughs> I'll have to cancel those plans. Um, it's a tough ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she likes me very much. <laughs> Why don't you go search for me in Columbia? I, I, <laughs> um, at lenpenzo.com. And uh, Drew's going to get a kick out of this. Uh, We talk about what happens to mortgages in hyperinflation, what could happen, and then what has happened in past hyperinflations in other countries and how they handled that. Uh, It's it's actually quite interesting at lenpenzo.com. So stop on by. It's it's actually a reader. One of I got a reader asked that question. And so I looked into it and got some good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Great way to spend your holiday is at lenpenzo.com. Sarah Catherine, it's about time we got you here. I'm so happy you were able to join us for a little bit of a bizarre episode, but we made it. Well, thanks for having me. My palms were sweating the whole time, but it was a lot of fun. And everybody's invited for a Colombian style paella at my house for wow. Labor Day. How about that? Ooh, that I would take. Heard it here first. I think some we're paella. Yes. That's uh that's pretty good stuff right there. And you know what? There's some underrated cities in America, and I will vote for Little Rock as one of those cities. I just love where you live. What a just badass town. Love every time you I go to Little it. Rock. It's super fun. But what's going on with you? Because you help companies, you help people. Where should we send people to come find you? Aptus Financial. We have a team of great financial planners, and we do advice only, flat fee financial planning, a guided DIY model. People can manage their own money. We teach you how to do it, help you invest. Awesome. And you know what? It's APT US. Oh, APT US financial. I was just thinking, how do I spell that? Yes. APT US. And you know what? If you're walking the dog or on your commute, for those of you that commute, we'll have you covered. We'll have links to Sarah Catherine, to uh, Len Penzo and everything we talked about on today's show, this piece from NerdWallet, which actually, guys, I actually really liked. I know we had some obvious, um, obvious things that they left off, but I don't think the ones that were on there were bad, different than some of the ones we do. So we'll link to this nerd wallet piece at stackybedjamins.com. All right. That's going to do it for today. Doug, I think you got it from here, my friend, which should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, there are lots of proven ways to save money. Take a few of our suggestions and run with them and share with us on social. When you score a few extra Benjamins in your pocket, you're welcome. Second, never count yourself out of any competition. Like Sarah Catherine showed us, any crazy idea can save you money. And just like it won her our major competition, it might just win you your race to retirement. But the big lesson? Time to move on from mansplaining to manscaping. See, what manscaping is, is when you have someone pour hot wax on your... Okay, okay, geez, Sarah, Catherine, I thought they might want to know. Not everybody knows about it. Thanks to Sarah Catherine Gutierrez for joining us today. You'll find her blog at ladiesplainingmoney.com. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash iPhone 8. Thanks also to OG for joining us today. Looking for good financial planning help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com slash OG for his calendar. I love how the pictures change here as I mention each person. It's like on the love boat when there were guest starring and you'd have somebody. (laughs) Wasn't that just great? This show is the property of SB Podcast LLC, copyright 2022, and is written and is written in part by Paulette Perhatch, who helps writers power their words, their work, and their earning potential with her Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. 
Thanks also to our team who made today possible. Brooke Miller juggles the production of this show, handles the show notes, and creates our amazing newsletter, The 201, all while raising a one-year-old. Tina Eichenberg and Gertrude Smith are our social media mavens. And not only should you not take advice from these chicken nuggets, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. Please don't make us wait a full minute. (laughs) Don't ruin the silent moment. Steve can add the minute. Steve's adding the minute right now. (laughs) Drew's like, for the last one, please just fix it in post. Yes, that's what I said. This is my favorite minute, Jeff. It's my favorite minute. Watching OG squirm is uh, so good. So the reason we still do it. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist, Sarah Catherine. What happens in the after show stays in the after show. And I thought, you know, we talked about saving money. We had a chef on, Mary Saba, on Wednesday who went through some great, not just some great recipes for this weekend, but also had some phenomenal food puns with her book, Don't Worry, Be Happy, which I thought was a great little pun. We didn't talk about drinks alcoholic, non-alcoholic, it doesn't matter. There must be a drink that you actually really like that other people might not have an appreciation for. And Len, let's start with you. It's a holiday weekend coming up. You got the uh, family, friends over, whatever it is. Give us a little recipe or a drink that uh, Len likes that maybe others don't have the appreciation for. Well, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people have appreciation for my drink of choice in the summer is the Cuba Libre. No, not rum and coke at Cuba Libre. It comes with the lime juice as well, but uh, I always have that. And the thing that I I will never get though, however, is if they have Pep, like if I go somewhere and there's Pepsi, I'm screwed because I refuse to get a rum and Pepsi Uh, just or a Cuba Libre with Pepsi. I mean, that's ridiculous. And so that's, uh, I try to avoid bars and restaurants that carry Pepsi. (laughs) <laughs> that Sarah is... Catherine, hopefully your bar does not have Pepsi. Wow. No Pepsi. No. This is the most emphatic I've heard Len about anything. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> there's there's so much doing. Like a your... lot of people look at the look at the stuff on the door where it says, you know, this restaurant's been rated a C or a B or an A. <laughs> Len's just like, you guys got Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> hey, I will not tolerate Pepsi. I just don't it, I don't tolerate it. You need more booze in your cocktail then, because <laughs> if you're doing it right, you shouldn't really taste that. Well, it, it is. It's a double if the place has discounts for doubles. <laughs> Always. And there's no dancing. Yes. We, I think we've made that clear. We can't have double discounts and, and the dancing. Uh, Sarah Catherine, drink of choice. Doesn't have to be alcoholic. Yeah, no, I mean, I always look forward to like a good old fashioned, like that's like my special holiday drink. Okay, just a question because uh, I have unscientific polls about this. Yes, do y'all put uh, like a fizzy drink in your uh, old fashioned or just uh, simple syrup? And- <laughs> just a tight, like a quarter of the simple syrup, and then a little bit of the cherry juice uh-huh. sweetens it enough, and uh, a good rye. Uh, the, and the other more thing is they put like silly stuff like Pepsi or not Pepsi, Seven uh, like up. Seven Up. No, no, I've been, no. I've been with OG twice when he got an old fashioned with like seven up or spread it. He like, sprays I that damn across near threw, the threw it across the bar. <laughs> he <laughs> like, literally takes We're going to make it my way. <laughs> across the Why is this fizzing? <laughs> no, that that's terrible. And then so also good. like if they don't serve it with like a big ice cube. Oh, yeah. I had yeah, to get the big just... ice cube thing off Amazon. Speaking of Amazon shopping. That could have been a uh, OG type purpose where it was late at night. I'm like, you know what I need? I need this right now from Amazon. I tried to buy a, a McAllen ice ball maker, but all my all the all the 
People I talked to said that it was really a ridiculous purchase. All, all of the people you talked to. I, I, I went around. It wasn't just you. I'm not going to just take your opinion he when you tell me no. tries to get me to go in on like a $3,000 ice cube maker. But it was really cool. He used copper. and. It Wait, is just, it really? $3,000? It was hey, stupid. Go check expensive. it out. It's pretty cool. Is that the surge pricing on Fridays and Saturdays after nine? <laughs> I don't think it was three grand. It might have been like 1200 but, For but it made some pretty sweet ice. ice cube. What if I don't want copper in my ice cubes, though? No, it's used <laughs> copper to melt oh. it. It's quite, quite the science experiment, honestly. I mean, it was in the interest of science is why I wanted to get it. Of course. Teach my duh. kids. <laughs> yes. the kids. This is what happens when you press ice. They're You'd like, never spend that kind of money if it weren't for science. <laughs> heck, <laughs> heck no. You Every know, when years. when I was paying my way through college, I would uh, DJ at some bars, and I would get Bar and Nightclub magazine. Just I, I don't even remember subscribing because I think they just got so much money from the you know the the uh, advertisers. They would always have these bar drinks, and my brother and I we would try these different drinks out. And there was one that was phenomenal called a Blue Motorcycle, and it was Blue Curacao, pineapple juice, Grand Marnier. Uh, Hawaiian punch. Like you're getting how sweet this is. It's sweet. It was so sweet and you would drink it. And because I'm in college, I'm like, Oh, this is fantastic. It was fantastic until the next morning when you woke up and you felt like somebody kicked your head all night long. Cause it was that sugar just, just went away. But even worse than that was that we started in our family calling uh, any bad night of like a blue motorcycle night because these nights would also end at 3 a.m. with like my brother and I hugging in the parking lot of my apartment. <laughs> I love you so much. And then you wake up, you're like, was I hugging my brother at 3 a.m. crying? Yeah, not good. Can I give you a, let me, let, let me give you a gross. That's what my I'll mom used to tell me when my, when I was walking home from school. <laughs> when, and when Penzo's, when Penzo's uh, candy van or whatever the hell he's, <laughs> hey kids, who wants to. Who wants the blue motorcycle? Uncle, uncle. <laughs> there, when I was in college, there was a there was a bar called I think it was it was Bull's Tavern. It's been so long since I've been in college. And they served. Let, Anyways, let me wait a minute. Had, Hold on, they had this, Hold they on. Had the grossest. Hold on. I know what you're going to say. They had the grossest Pepsi. Pepsi. No, they were a Coke oh. Coke establishment. Oh, but they had a shot that was the grossest thing. It was called a Bull Sweat. What it was, this is disgusting, but it was very popular. It was rum, Tabasco sauce, and Worcestershire sauce. Oh, and, and you'd shoot awesome. it. Oh, my God. It, Dude, it'd make you want to gag. But everybody had to have the bull sweat at least once when you went into Bulls Town. I'm going to marinate my steak in that. <laughs> it Actually, was disgusting. Probably would help with the shoe leather you serve everybody. So. <laughs> Why was that necessary? Wow. Wow. That got real in a hurry. I feel like you might have I saw, overshot the mark there. I saw <laughs> I saw a drink on TikTok. You guys can use this on your uh, Labor Day party. Ask somebody if they want an ocean spray and make them whatever the hell you want. Make it up as a shot. And uh, as they take the shot, you take a glass full of water that you've hidden like behind the bar and you just throw it at them. It was just so bad. They take the shot and they get the ocean spray. And I don't know. The person on the video was uh, surprised and not happy. I'm glad you clarified that because I couldn't figure that out, Joe. Good. Let me. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Catherine, can you ladies play my, my joke to me? All right. I think we're I think we're out of here. <laughs>